Welcome to Amcom Solutions, Jake here. So another reticulum video for you today. I started my little rabbit hole into reticulum a couple months back and the whole goal of mine was of course to learn more myself and then share that information and break it down as layman as I possibly can on my understanding. Uh, I'm not super tech savvy. I'm not a developer. I'm not a coder. I'm not any of those things. I'm just a avid mesh network mesh radio user and I really like what Reticulum has to offer. If you don't know what Reticulum is, this is probably not the video for you. For you. I'll link a video over here that gives you a more broader scope overview of what Reticulum actually is. Now, I was recently made aware of a map project called RMAP, which is Reticulum Network Worldwide Map Project that was released in March of 2025, so earlier this year, and it still doesn't have that many people on there. Now, some people might immediately get concerned that their stuff is gonna get automatically added and no, that's not how it works. You have to go on there and add it yourself. And you can add in pertinent information like what LoRa frequencies you're using because in the reticulum project, there's not a preset channels or preset frequencies like you would see in something like Mestastic. So, there may be R nodes in your neighborhood or in your city, but they might be using a different frequency as long as obviously they're within the authorized frequency ranges for your ISM bands for your region. This will help you because you could go on there and you could click on it. We'll show you this here in a second and see what frequencies that individual is using and potentially connect, right? So, uh, and then, of course, there's more than just an R node, a LoRa node in Reticulum because it is a network stack. And there's, you know, you got Sideband and Mesh Chat and NomadNet. So <laughs> there's a lot there. You could have people that have their uh, VHF radios connected through this. They could have HF radios connected through this. So you're going to be able to add that information in there so people know um, what you're using and what's available and then potentially connect with those or use that node as a transport node if they have it set up correctly. We'll hop on over to rmap.world and you're gonna see here a very similar mapping that you'll see on some of the other mesh projects. And you can see obviously there is not that many on here. So we'll look at some of these and I'll show you what this looks like and how it can help you connect with other users. And then we'll go into how you add yours onto here if you so choose. So we'll zoom into the Seattle area and you see here, here's Phantom Junction. And on here, this is gonna tell you the name, the node type, Laura. So this is an R node. Coordinates, I'm gonna blur that. You can go check for yourself, obviously, if they're publishing it here. Now for address, for privacy purposes, we'll touch on that really quick. When you're entering, as we show, you're gonna insert the full city address um, so you don't have to search the lat long yourself, but it is not gonna show the actual address on there. And so you, of course, can put this, you know, in the center of the city or near or whatever, so that if you don't want to obviously put the exact position of your home on there, you don't have to. So there's some privacy there. And then frequency, this is the key one, bandwidth and spread factor, including the coding rate. So this stuff and the type of device, what type of R node they're using. And there can be additional notes here. Here's their LXMF contact. So you could actually reach out to them on something like mesh chat, so on and so forth. So, or sideband for that matter there. So there's that information. Let's see if we can find one that has more than just R node on it. That's Laura. Key factor here, look, this individual is using Laura, but they have it 914 uh, decimal 875. So, and their bandwidth is different and their spread factor is different. So, and they're using a LilyGo uh, Laura 32 V version 2181. Their only additional notes is when it was added. They didn't add a LXMF address on there. So, uh, let's see, I know I can find one here. This is a TCP. Um, so it's RNS type. So, and then 
the end of the road at TCP. There's their host name, the port number, and their IP v6 only so it's showing you how they have this configured so so hop over here to europe and you can see there's um some in the in england there so scroll back out you see there's quite a few more users in the european region and you can of course scroll on and check those out if that's where you're located at and then for looking at or to add, so like right here, you see this little little GPS point with the plus sign, add a new node. And then this is, you're gonna select what you're doing. You're, you could just add your contacts. You can add a nomad net node. You can add a TCP interface server, an I2P interface. So you can see obviously, um, all these different things, a BBS server, uh, and then of course, MQTT live nodes. And you're going to select those. So let's just say we're adding an R node, select that hit next, and then you're going to start entering your information and then it'll give you, and then you tell them what frequency you're using, the bandwidth, the spread factor, the coding rate, the device you can you know name it you know Helltech v3 as they have there's an example firmware and add any additional informations like if you wanted to add your lm lxmf uh, address there so that people can connect with you on like sideband and mesh chat also so and then you submit it so back to the map and then one of the recent updates they did is where you can come in here and edit a node so you're going to enter your your assigned characters for that node and then you'll find it and then you can edit it. So like if you change what you're doing, then you can, you know, you change something, a configuration change or frequency change, something else, uh, then you edit that information. So that was something they added recently. Another page I would recommend checking out is the reticulum GitHub discussions. You can go over here and a lot of times find the answers to the questions you might already have. Someone's already posted something about it. If you can't find it, you can post your own questions. This is where you can find also more information about the RMAP project. So check it out. The link will be in the description. To close this out, I find the RMAP pretty cool. Of course, you can tell that there's not very wide adoption. Hopefully this video gets some better adoption over there. I'm going to add one of my nodes on there and Hopefully you'll share this video or at least share the link to our map to other people you know that are using Reticulum and we can get more traction. And I always encourage support open source projects, especially ones like Reticulum and others. And whether it's just by using them, promoting them or donating to them, whatever, whatever way you can support these open source projects. If you found this video useful, you can support the channel by subscribing, hitting that thumbs up, checking out our website, social media links down below, Discord page or Discord server, Telegram group. You can check those out, all links below. Thanks for watching.